The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Now on the season finale of UMass Sports Insider. As the Minutemen hockey team moves into the conference tournament, we'll tell you the story of one of its few seniors, a player whose career on the ice was cut short by injury, but one who off the ice continues to contribute to his team and the game he loves. And you'll meet a young woman from another part of the world who starred on the soccer pitch for four years and now before her college career comes to a close has picked up a stick and learned an entirely new sport. Plus, we'll hear from the head man of the athletic department. And as his first year on the job comes to an end, we'll look back on some big successes from the past few weeks with Ryan Bamford. Ready for one more exciting final episode, UMass Sports Insider, here it goes. You're watching UMass Sports Insider, presented by Mafre Insurance, Coca-Cola, and Office Depot Office Max. It's been a fun year for us in our first season here on Nesson, covering all things UMass, from the football team's opening trips to Colorado and Notre Dame, to the men's basketball team pulling off some big upset victories last month, and a little bit of everything else in between. Now as we wrap up the show for the time being, the winter sports teams head into conference tournaments over the next two weeks and will look to make some noise. Hello there, welcome again to UMass Sports Insider. I'm your host, Josh Maurer. Well, the women's basketball team is competing at the A-10 tournament in Richmond this week after finishing the regular season with five consecutive victories. Meanwhile, the Minute Men have a senior night matchup Saturday against LaSalle here at the Mullen Center, while hockey is playing in the Hockey East opening round best of three series at BU. More on them coming up in just a moment, but let's start with men's lacrosse. Bouncing back from a very disappointing overtime loss to Harvard over the weekend, Greg Canella's team defeated Hartford on Tuesday at Garber Field. Here are the highlights brought to you by Office Depot, Office Max. The victory against Hartford left UMass at 2-2 two and two with a big rivalry matchup coming up Saturday afternoon against Brown. Well, now let's move to hockey. As I mentioned earlier, the Minutemen begin their playoffs with a best of three series this weekend at Boston University. And unfortunately, as has been the case for the past couple of years, they will not have the services of Evan Stack, a senior who had his career cut short by brain injuries. However, Evan has kept a very positive attitude and remained a huge part of the program off off the ice without being able to compete on it. Let's meet Evan Stack. It was about four games into my freshman year and I got hurt for the very first time. After that, I was never really the same with some concussion and neck issues. So for the rest of my freshman and sophomore year, I think I played a total of uh, 13 games. So it's been kind of a tough road from that standpoint, but I've tried to stay involved with the hockey program ever since I had to sign a medical disqualification. And as well, I try to stay involved with uh, youth hockey and things around here too just try and help out where I can. Your knees bend, two hands, head up. Ready, Robinson? All right, ready, three, two, one, backwards. Go, 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 go. Sorry, forward run. Stop. Backwards, 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 backwards. Well, it, you know, it's interesting because Evan was a very mature young man when he, when he came to us. Uh, very bright, very motivated, very directed in his life, so you know, you wouldn't expect there to be a huge growth opportunity from where he started. Uh, but again, I, I think it, uh, it gave him new purpose, uh, not only with the role that he had on the team, but how much enjoyment he got out of it. And then I think the attraction for him to be involved with youth hockey as a result of it, you know, really started to expand what it was, and the influence that he could have, not only within our program, but within the community. That was awesome, guys. You look great. I'm really impressed. I talked to Jeff Smith a little bit last year and he said they were looking for some help on ice and I think I went out a couple times last year. Uh, this year they said they were looking for like a program director for mites. Um, so I started out this year by planning mites hockey practices for seven and eight year olds. But I'm still on the ice pretty much every week trying to help out, uh, doing drills, showing the kids what I know. So guys, we got Coach Evan back again. That's good. Woo! Little sticks, sticks, 
Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna be working on a little backwards and forward skating, okay? Pivot, pivot, pivot. Backwards all the way to the blue. Stop on the blue, stop on the blue. Wait, wait, wait there, Graham, wait there. Certainly, it hasn't been easy. I, I obviously would much rather have been playing my whole career, but it has been rewarding being able to work with the kids. That's something I wouldn't have been able to do if I was still playing. So it's nice to see kids who love playing hockey, and that was the reason why everyone in our dressing room started to begin with. You see the ripple effect that, that Evan's participation in youth hockey had. Uh, and so, you know, it was just kind of heartwarming. Uh, you know, in a difficult situation that other people were, were able to uh, be impacted by Evan and his story and as well as his knowledge, uh, as well as Evan, you know, getting uh, something, you know, really significant out of his experience there as well. Oh, Eric! Oh, Eric! Ah! Oh. Hear it? It is still a fun game and it is a game to begin with, so you get all caught up where you want to play next and trying to make it to the next level and putting in a ton of work but in the end it is just a game and the reason we play is to have fun and you can see it with the kids every day they uh, for their systems and offsides and all this kind of stuff it's just just trying to put a puck in the net which is the best part. He says that after doing some coaching with the local youths and working with the team off the ice he's decided that maybe he'd want to pursue a career as a hockey coach after he leaves UMass. Well, it's time for us to take a quick break here on UMass Sports Insider. We'll be right back on the other side when we switch to women's lacrosse and hear how a longtime standout in soccer for the UMass program has picked up a brand new sport for herself before graduating. Hear all about it right after this. I'm getting ready to shop for school supplies and I'm kind of super excited about it. A number two pencil, it'll get you through the day. This is what you need. Why didn't I get enough pencils? Like I'd open a pack of paper and be like, it smells like learning. <laughs> future is now, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm going to get. This right here. I am a student again, and I can do anything. I have an agenda. insurance company with a global network focused on taking care of you and your family providing freedom from worry everywhere you go Moffray insurance a forward-thinking insurance company with a global network providing friendly service with over 2,000 professionals taking care of you and your family Moffray insurance Leadership isn't given, it's earned, realized, accomplished, fulfilled, won. Leadership isn't given, it's taken. Drives, he shoots, he scores. That's right, it's basketball season and your UMass men and men are ready to take to the court at the Mullen Center. Don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to get your seats for this season's premium matchups and exciting game day action. Choose your games with the maroon pack or the musket pack. Select three great games for only $55 or five games for $90. Great seats are still available. And single game tickets are starting at just $20. Get your game on. Call 866-UMASS-TICKS or visit UMASSathletics.com to lock in your seats today. Welcome back to UMass Sports Insider. Well, after coming to Amherst all the way from Iceland, Rebecca Sferistotter starred for four seasons on the pitch as one of the most reliable back-end defenders for UMass soccer. And if that was the last time we had ever seen her compete at UMass, it would have been a great run. But thanks to some encouragement from some unlikely sources, Rebecca decided to continue her athletic career before graduating and has picked up a sport that she had never before tried learning her way through women's lacrosse and trying to help the squad to another Atlantic 10 title. Let's meet Rebecca Sferistotter, presented by Office Depot, Office Max. 
As, as a soccer player, I mean, she was one of the better defenders in the A-10, um, and she just got better and better as she came in. We knew she was good coming into the program, but um, the, the thing we didn't know about her was just how competitive she is. She's one of the most competitive players I think I've ever had in the program. At the end of the soccer career here at UMass, I have to say I was a little disappointed we didn't make it to the playoffs, but um, I mean, I had great experience four years with soccer. After the season, I was joking around with my teammates saying that now I have to find a new sport, not really thinking that would be something that would come true, but here I am, <laughs> playing lacrosse. <laughs> we try to keep things fun and fresh for our team, and we decided to have a mixed scrimmage with the soccer team. I just stood on the field, you know, in, in all different aspects, but specifically just her speed, athleticism. I looked at Ed and said, you know, hey, like, do you think she'd ever be willing to put a, a lacrosse stick in her hand and you know, play another sport? Ice and I spoke about it, and honestly, it's you know she told me she's never even seen a lacrosse game. Being from Iceland, she told me that she knew nothing about the sport. Knowing Ice the past four years, she's she's the type of kid that she's just naturally good at every single thing she she undertakes or does or puts her mind to. And when she said she was going to play lacrosse, I, I knew she would probably go out and succeed at it. First practice was, well, let's say, interesting. I just remember thinking, what did I get myself into? But the girls just made me feel like I was part of the team. I, I don't really think anybody knew what to expect, you know, and, and a, a few girls did know of her and, you know, knew what a great person she was, what a great athlete, teammate she was um, on the soccer team. So I think it was really positive reception, but I don't think that they had any expectations necessarily when it came to the lacrosse side of things. It's been hard. Just I came in this, this program trying to do my best every every single practice and I mean this program and these girls, the coaches, they have given me so much. So what I, I'm hoping to do is just to try to give something back. We do a lot of conditioning, a lot of fitness in preseason and she was the first person to cross the line on every single sprint. Our assistant coach, um, Brianna, asked her, you know, what, 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 what's your goal time? And her first immediate response was, well, what did the fastest person get on the team the other day? And I think she said like 607. And so she said 606. When I said, why are you playing the cross? You know, you, you, uh, there's so many other things that you could be concentrating on right now that you have a little bit more freedom, um, not having as many classes and, and graduating in May. And she said, I want to win an A-10 championship. Well, I think she's going to be telling those girls, even though they've won an A-10 championship, don't take it for granted and, and it means so much. Yeah, this is my last semester and, um, well, my last chance to win an A-10 championship. That's also a reason why I was really excited to join this team because I know there's nothing I can stop this team from winning the eighth championship. So I'm really excited for that and I'm I that would be great to end this career with an A10 championship. We'll see if Rebecca's playing time increases as she continues to pick up the nuances of the sport of women's lacrosse. Meanwhile, for Angela McMahon's team, it's been another great start to the season. And once conference play begins next month, the minute women will be trying to win an unprecedented eighth consecutive Atlantic 10 title. Well, we're stepping aside again here on UMass Sports Insider. But when we come back, we sit down with the head coach and team captain from UMass Baseball. As the season on the diamond gets underway this weekend in South Carolina, you'll get a preview right after this. He drives, he shoots, he scores. That's right, it's basketball season and your UMass men and men are ready to take to the court at the Mullen Center. Don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to get your seats for this season's premium matchups and exciting game day action. Choose your games with the maroon pack or the musket pack. Select three great games for only $55 or five games for $90. Great seats are still available. Single game tickets are starting at just $20. Get your game on. Call 866-UMASS-TICKS or visit UMASSathletics.com to lock in your seats today. We are back on UMass Sports Insider. The baseball season gets underway this weekend with a series in Charleston, South Carolina. The Minutemen get it going against the Charleston Southern Buccaneers, and it's time to preview the campaign. We've got lots of great guests here, as you can see, presented by Peter Pan, head coach Mike Stone. We've got John Jennings and Ben Panunzio, catcher first baseman, reliever. These are two of the captains for the team. So coach, let me start with you. First of all, it must be exciting every time that you get to open a season. You've, you've been through 
You've been through your fair share of opening weekends. How, how does this one feel going into it? Well, this would be the 34th, uh, 29 here, but um, yeah, we're excited. We've spent a lot of time preparing and we're really excited for the weekend against Charleston Southern. Well, let's hear from the captains. And John, I'm going to start with you as a guy who's going to be counted on in the order to produce. Tell us a little bit about the lineup that you guys have and yourself and the guys that we're counting on for some offense this year. Well, I think uh, our lineup from top to bottom can produce uh, at a pretty high rate. I think it gets going, like one through five is definitely where it starts with us. But I think even the guys down at the bottom, there's some, there's some veteran leaders down there who can get it done. So I think it's going to be a good season. How, how difficult is it to go from just practicing, and a lot of it obviously here you have to do indoors, but then you have to go and hit live pitching next with this coming weekend out there in Charleston? Um, well, we've been hitting live inside, and I think actually it might be a little bit easier once we get outside because we've been in upper board and uh, hitting in the dark a little bit. So I think it helps once we get outside and it's light. The ball seems like a beach ball out there. So, Ben, you're going to be counted on coming out of the bullpen. Obviously, that was a role that you flourished in last year. Tell us about yourself, your personal goals for this season. My personal goal for this season, I guess, would just be consistent, um, whether it be on the mound or as a captain. Um, I want the guys to be able to look at me as, a, as an emotional leader as well as, you know, be productive on the field. Um, so just be as consistent as I can getting guys out. How do you feel about the overall strength of your pitching staff this year? I think the pitching staff is one of the best we've had in, in, in my years here. Um, you know, from the starting rotation and then we have a very solid bullpen. Um, we have a lot of experience, which I think will help, but we also have a good group of young guys that are ready to, to f come in and fill some roles. You're going to head to Florida after the Charleston trip. That's a, an annual tradition during spring break here at UMass. Tell us a little bit about that trip and the opponents that you're going to be facing down in the Sunshine State. It's always fun to go to Florida. We're going to open up with Army in a three-game series uh, the first weekend. Then we play Harvard twice, uh, Maine once, Lehigh, and then finish up with uh, Maine again on Saturday. It's actually Sunday before we head, we head home. Um, so it's, um, you know, we're playing in Clearwater, we're playing in um, uh, Tampa and Winter Haven. And... Uh, just, uh, you know, it's always fun to get down there when it's cold up north uh, to, you know, get in the green grass and play some baseball. I wanted to, to hear about that from your guys' perspective as players as well. And, John, we'll start with you. T do you look forward all year to these kind of trips to get there and, and play in some of these beautiful climates that you get to do in the season's first month? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, going down there and playing in some warm weather is nice because once we get back here, even March, April, it can still be cold. So getting down there and be able to play with – Great weather is definitely something you look forward to. How about you, Ben? What do you think about these first few road trips that you have? Um, I think it's fun just, just just to start playing baseball again. Playing the competition is what you know something the players look forward to the most. Um, so playing other teams and, and seeing how we measure up is is kind of what it is for us. Well, great job, guys! It's so good to have all of you here, and we wish you best of luck getting the season going this weekend. Thank you, Josh. UMass baseball starting at Charleston Southern this Friday. We're going to take another break here on UMass Sports Insider. On the other side, we're chatting with the man in charge of the athletic department. As Ryan Bamford approaches the one-year anniversary of getting hired at UMass, we find out his thoughts on a wide range of topics, so keep it right here. We'll be right back. Leadership isn't given. It's earned realized, accomplished, fulfilled, won. Leadership isn't given, it's taken. Welcome back. It's UMass Sports Insider. We're getting close to the end of our shows for the year, and so we thought we'd bring on the Director of Athletics to wrap up what's been a, a very exciting few months for us here in UMass Athletics, presented by Moffray Insurance. Here's Ryan Bamford. It's great to see you, Ryan. You Thank know, you. A couple of weekends ago, we won with UMass two Atlantic 10 championships in the same weekend, men's swimming and diving, women's indoor track and field. That's really great anytime that you're able to pile up the hardware like that. Huh? Yeah, it, it, it really was a culmination of the winter season for those sports. Um, you know, women's indoor track, even men, men's indoor track finished third. And then the swimming side to have another men's champ. Russ and his staff have done a phenomenal job and uh, very proud to have two champions on campus in the winter season. And as we wrap up what's been 
a kind of topsy-turvy few months with the winter sports teams. Now they're getting towards Atlantic 10 championship season, Hockey yeah. East championship season. When you get your teams into postseason play, I know that's an exciting time for an athletic department. Yeah, it is. Anytime, anytime you get into the postseason, you have a chance to make a run and do something uh, in, in, your, in your own league and then hopefully translates into maybe something nationally if you make a really good run. So the spring sports seasons are actually underway. It's been a really good start for women's lacrosse, those seven-time defending yeah. A-10 champions. Men's lacrosse had a huge upset of Ohio State. Lacrosse is so big around here, it's nice to see them off to a good start. We look for a lot of really good things out of uh, Angela and her program in women's lacrosse. They're nationally competitive. That's a sport we think that we can continue continue to carry the banner and plant the flag. And then Greg's got a young team, but a really hard-working team. Have had some good results. The win over nationally ranked Ohio State is something that we can build on. And uh, we get into league play and anything can happen, and we're hoping to um, get into a point where we're playing our best lacrosse. And we've got some sports that are played on the fields with the diamonds and yeah. the circles, with softball underway, baseball this weekend. Yeah. We just heard from Coach Stone. They'll be starting in Charleston, South Carolina. Excited to get those two going as well. At this time of year, they're ready to play games. To go down south and to get some games in will be good. If they can come back and we can get them in here too, it'll be even better. We're hoping to get out on the field for Christy and Mike in softball and baseball. It's been a few weeks, but we're still kind of riding a high throughout the athletic department from National Signing Day in football and the mm. great recruiting class that Coach Whipple and his staff brought in. So now, with that behind us, spring practice is going to start just next week. Starts with spring practice here in the, in the next week as, as Whip and his guys get ready to go. We take a little bit of a break for spring break, come back and really go a month solid of practice, and then it culminates on April 15th with our, our spring game. Got a great 2016 home schedule, so I know our, our guys are looking forward to it. They're putting a lot of work in in the weight room and, and with our strength and conditioning staff. We're gonna do good things moving forward in the first 11 months. If it's just a glimpse of where we're headed, then. I'm really excited about the things that are, are on the uh, horizon for us. Well, I think that's a great way to end it. Thank yeah. you so much. Ryan. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate it. Director of Athletics, Ryan Bamford. We're back to wrap up a season's worth of UMass Sports Insider. Right after this, keep it right here. A forward-thinking insurance company with a global network. Focused on taking care of you and your family. Providing freedom from worry everywhere you go. Moffray Insurance a forward-thinking insurance company with a global network. Providing friendly service with over 2,000 professionals taking care of you and your family. Moffray Insurance. Number two pencil, it'll get you through the day. This is what you need. Why didn't I get enough pencils? Like, I'd open a pack of paper and I'd be like, it smells like learning. <laughs> Love that sound. Oh, the future is now, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I'm gonna get. This right here. I am a student again, and I can do anything. I have an agenda. <laughs> Drives, he shoots, he scores! That's right, it's basketball season and your UMass Minutemen are ready to take to the court at the Mullen Center. Don't miss out on the fun. Be sure to get your seats for this season's premium matchups and exciting game day action. Choose your games with the Maroon Pack with the Musket Pack. Select three great games for only $55 or five games for $90. Great seats are still available. Single game tickets are starting at just $20. Get your game on. Call 866-UMASS-TICKS or visit umassathletics.com to lock in your seats today.
Welcome back. We're just about finished here on UMass Sports Insider. We certainly hope that you've enjoyed it. Good luck this weekend to UMass men's basketball as it finishes out the regular season. Derek Kellogg's squad will host LaSalle at 8 p.m. on Saturday night and also to the UMass hockey team in its opening round playoff series at BU. It's best two out of three. Good luck to Coach Micheletto and company. We'd certainly like to thank everybody who's been a big part of getting this show produced all year long. Thanks to our friends at Animus and everybody here in UMass Athletics. We'll talk to you in the fall as UMass football opens in the first weekend at Florida. We'll get you ready for it with another season of UMass Sports Insider coming right at about Labor Day. Have a great off season. Thank you for watching. I'm Josh Maurer. So long, everyone.